afternoon all. It's summer. Well, no, it's not summer, it's spring really. But it's pretty nice. It's not quite warm enough to uh, take the fleece off, but uh, yeah, I'm heading for the shed because uh, I want to get the electric bike out. Oh, I should be looking at the lens, shouldn't I? Yeah. I want to get the electric bike out and uh, just check the battery on it to make sure that in the uh, six months that it's been stuck in the shed, it hasn't, uh, nothing untoward has happened to it. So here she is. Uh, now I've left the uh, battery pack in the bike. I didn't put the cover on um, this little box, which was a bit silly. But I suppose those haven't corroded too badly in the shed. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that this has a relay in it. And if I've left the battery pack on, then the relay will have drained the cells down below. It is safe to let lithium cells drain down. But uh, fortunately there, you can see that it's off, not on. So let's uh, get the saddle off because until you get the saddle off, you can't... It's a bit tricky doing this one hand. I'll have to do that on my own. Now, if I uh, listen out for a telltale click when I turn the key on... Yeah. You can hear the click there. Uh, that at least means there's some juice in the battery still. So let's put it on the bike and see if I can spin the wheels. So if I turn the throttle here and watch the back wheel... Oi, oi, oi! I thought it would slide. Let's try to against the battery box. Yep, that's still got juice in it, so that's fine. Now, I've just put the uh, cell monitor on here. This is an eight-way uh, LiPo cell monitor. Works for LiFi as well, I suppose. Yes, because you can set the, the low voltage alarm uh, value. So let's look at the values, all 26.5. Number one is 3.29, number two is 3.29, number 3, 3.33, number 4, 3.23, 3.32, I'm not sure I believe these, I'm not sure that this is terribly accurate, that yeah, could be right, if I get this on the Turnergy charger, I can double check these fit. Now I've been charging the uh, bicycle battery with this Turnergy 8 cell charger, because there are 8 cells in the battery. Uh, I've got to try and remember how this thing works now. Uh... Right, I'm going to go for a LIFI balance charge. So nominal voltage is 26.4 volts. That's uh, 8S, 8 cells in series, 3 amps. Nice gentle charge. Right, that's the balance charge lead uh, connected into the 8 cell port. So let's go for press and hold, I believe it is. Battery check. Uh, 8 series is what it read, 8 series is what I set, confirm enter, and away it goes. Now I can read the 8 cell voltages on the increment decrement buttons, and we got 3.36 or 7 or 8 pretty much across the board, so that looks fine to me. I think the uh, little monitor unit was giving me false information. So this is the setup as I have it now. I have this big uh, lead acid car battery, which is kept topped up and um, charged by solar. It's the right hand of the two panels up on my frame here. And then I transfer the charge from the lead acid through the Turnergy uh, eight cell balance charger into the lithium ion phosphate cells that are in the bicycle battery pack but I want to do things a little differently this summer because my knowledge and understanding of lithium cells has improved and I want to try a different charge. Now specifically what I want to do differently this year is I want to try charging the battery using this it's the Electrodacus SBMS 4080. Uh, this is a solar BMS it's designed to have uh, PV or solar panel connected directly here on the input and then charge the battery from that. Um, 
it has a, a chip inside, it's an Intersil chip, can't quite remember the number now, which does balance charging through these uh, balance leads here. And it also has uh, load connections, which I probably won't use because I don't think this thing will be connected to the bike battery uh, at all times, just while I'm charging it. Now there are a number of things that I'm going to have to do differently if I use the SBMS. One of those is that I won't be able to use a 12 volt lead acid battery and that's because this doesn't have any uh, step up electronics in it. It doesn't have a boost converter so I won't be able to get 12 volts up to the 25, 26, 27, whatever this thing needs to charge it. So I'm going to have to use uh, a PV panel which can give me in excess of what this needs which I think is 28.8 that's currently sitting at 28.48 so yes I'm gonna to have to use the panel that Jonty gave me let's take a look and uh, this is it it's uh, hiding here behind the shed this is a 60 cell panel so uh, if the cells are about half a volt each then that's about 30 volts open circuit voltage in fact let's check the spec panel on the Yes, in fact, uh, the open circuit voltage given here is 36.53, so 36, that's about 0.6 volts per cell. Uh, 6, 6 is a 36, yes, that's about right. Um, now, you're not going to get that when it's uh, producing current. In fact, you can see that the rated voltage, the max power voltage, is 28.75, so it's just about enough to charge those uh, lithium-ion phosphate cells. And in terms of current, uh, this thing uh, has a short circuit current of 8.7 amps, uh, max power current of 8.35, so it's going to kick out about 8 amps. Now the cells are 10 amp hour, so this will be charging at about 0.8 C. Now as far as the SBMS is concerned, those currents, or that current, is fine because this thing can take uh, a charge current of 40 amps on these two connections here and uh, it can take a discharge current of up to 80 amps on the four 20 amps each uh, load terminal connections so this thing with 8 amps going through it for charging it's not going to have a problem of course it won't be able to uh, balance very effectively at 8 amps because it only can put uh, 100 milliamps of offset current on the balance lead so I have to make sure that the cells are reasonably well balanced to start with. Well I can do that of course with the Turnergy running at a much lower. Now there's one cell on the uh, pack that seems a bit low, this one, cell 3. It's reading 3 point sort of mid 4s. All the others are up to uh, 3.59 and they shouldn't go above 3.6 and that should be achieved by the Turnergy putting the resistors across the uh, balance leads to make sure they don't go higher than 3.6 and so far that seems to be working if they creep up there like 3.62 then the resistor should be placed across that cell and hold it down and it seems to be working let's go back around to the other ones so they're all below 3.6 this one's at 3.45 it's a little way to go yet I've wound the current charging current down to 1 amp, that's actually gone down to 0.7 now because we're uh, near the 28.8 maximum voltage. The numbers are all a bit strange on here but I'm just going to keep an eye on it for the moment. Now one of the reasons I'm very keen to use the Electrodacus SBMS is because this has configurable parameters, completely configurable parameters so that you can adjust the uh, upper voltage cutoff or lithium ion phosphate or uh, lithium ion or lithium polymer uh, whereas on here you just select whether it's uh, LiFi, LiPo or LiIO and all the voltages are set but, I mean there are no actual voltage uh, the correct voltage settings for all these cell types it's up to you I mean you can set the voltages uh, the upper voltages a bit lower or the lower voltages a bit higher if you want the battery to have a longer service life you don't have to go absolutely by the book. And that's the thing about these 8-cell BMS boards. Uh, both of these boards are suitable for 8 cells. Uh, this one actually uh, Dacian gave me, Electrodacus, and this one Jim Connor sent to me. But uh, both said don't use them because the parameters 
are not set very well uh, they're set really to push the cells a bit too hard take the upper voltage too high and the lower voltage too low and then non-adjustable I mean if these things had um, a little OLED display on them and a couple of switches so that you could adjust the parameters then they'd be great but they don't they're just fixed voltages and not always ideal for uh, in fact rarely these ones ideal for what you want to use them for now before I do all this of course I've got to get hold of some connectors the uh, SBMS uses this uh, IDC connector insulation displacement connector two rows of five pins ten pins in total so I need to get a uh, a plug I suppose it would be for that and uh, the solar panel has these MC3 connectors on it rather than the more common MC4s so I've ordered a, a little one meter extension lead which I'll cut in half and that'll give me uh, the plug and the socket on a couple of wire tails which I can use to connect to the PV input on the SBMS and uh, the other thing I've got to think about with the SBMS is what if there's no sun and I want to charge my bike battery pack but I can't do it directly from solar well the contingency for that will be to charge it from the lead acid pack uh, like I'm doing with the Turnergy charger but use one of these boost converters I've got this big um, 20 uh, no yes 20 amp boost converter well that's going to be happy at uh, sort of uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 amps so that'll take the 12 volts of the lead acid battery up to sort of 30 volts ish for the uh, lithium ion phosphate pack uh, it's got constant uh, current or current limiting here so that can be used because the SBMS doesn't have any current limiting it relies on the inherent limiting of the uh, PV panel a PV panel in full sun is not going to go over the maximum current so I can set the current limit on here and then connect the output of this to the PV connections on the SBMS and that should work if there's no sun so that's the big change I want to make to the uh, electric bike charging system switching from the uh, Turnergy charger to the solar BMS um, I'm not going to do any more on this today because actually it's turned out to be rather a disappointing day the sun's gone in it's all got a bit cloudy and it's all got a bit chilly so I'm gonna leave it there cheerio